Hi everyone, my name is Monroe Mann. I am the founder and coding projects manager of breakdiving.io. And today we're gonna to be learning about Git, Git pull requests, and how to work with a remote team uh, as a coder, uh, linking Git and GitHub. It's not gonna go over absolutely everything. This is primarily a tutorial for our staff members. Uh, Susan is one of our team members and Leo Lath uh, is also one. Uh, both of them are new to the team, so I'm going through this and this is my effort to uh, reduce me having to teach this every single time a new team member joins us. And uh, so I asked them to join because uh, Susan took this one already. And uh, so she has a basic familiarity with Git and GitHub. Leo has not really, and he's a really uh, new coder, very new. And Susan has been coding Java for about 20 years. So she's not a web developer, but she's, she's got a coding mind. And so I asked both of them to join. And so if they have any questions, they're just gonna interrupt and, and ask, and I will answer them. And perhaps those questions and answers will help you as well. So I'm gonna share my screen and we will get to work. So here is on the Zoom, we don't need that. So the first thing is we are on GitHub. And so if you haven't, you need to make sure that you clone your repository. So the first thing that you will do is you'll actually, I recommend that you create in the C drive, if you're on Windows, mo most of our coders are, go to a local disk and create a file, a folder just called coding. And in there we have, uh, these are all of my different coding projects. The reason I'll do that, I'll show you in a second, why is that helpful? Because it, it reduces a lot of typing. The second thing you have to make sure is that you have access to the repository. So go to GitHub or talk to whoever your team leader is and say, hey, can you add me? Here's my GitHub ID and can you invite me? So here's BD Community, this is our our main site at breakdiving.io. We would love you to join us. We're the friendliest place on the internet, coolest social media site on the planet. And, but we also have a whole bunch of them. So you have to make sure you find the right one. So here's a, here are different repos in the breakdiving GitHub. And the one I'm gonna show you how to work with right now is breakdiving new. This is a static site. What do I mean by that is there's no database. So it's just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. BD community, however, is a dynamic site, which means it has a database. We use PostgreSQL. Uh, doing the pull requests and, all, and setting the, up the development environment for this is a lot more difficult because you have to install Ruby and Rails and Redis and link everything all together. And it's a little bit more complicated, but giving an example on a static site shows you the basic Git commands and how to do things. Uh, that you can translate over to doing dynamic things. And if you notice here, we have 10 people right now on the team. So uh, I gave Susan and Leo, they have access now, and they'll be able to clone the repository. And I believe, and I, Susan actually already has, I helped her the other day. Leo, I'm not sure if he has. So Leo, what you're gonna wanna do is go on to break diving, break diving new, and right here on code, you're gonna find this screen here and that you can clone with SSH or HTTPS. SSH is the default because it's a lot easier. It's right there and it doesn't require that you constantly add, uh, type in your passwords and stuff we like already, that. We already changed from SSH to HTTPS. Like we were, we were just testing the, this, uh, the same VR and the break diving new and we already cloned this repository. Okay, uh, so. The other day. Okay. Excellent. Great. So we, we cloned it. We were having some problems with SSH with Leo. With yeah. Susan, we were able to do SSH, no problem. It doesn't really matter which one you do. If you're wondering, which one should I do? What is it really important? It's not really important. Just if you can do the SSH one, and I'm going to show you how to do that, do it with SSH. If not, then go to the HTTP. You notice they both have just these URLs. URL, and this is, this is basically a URL, even though it doesn't look precisely like that, it's, but it's telling you to clone this repository here. So we would clone with SSH and we would copy it to the clipboard. So then what we need to do is go to Ubuntu. And if you haven't, you need, this is by the way, the Ubuntu app. So if you wanna do coding on Windows with Ruby on Rails and things like that, you can't do it very easily just on Windows. So we installed the Windows subsystem for Linux. You can find a great tutorial for that at uh, breakdiving.io, click on resources and then click on rails and you will find 
this tutorial from GoRails and get this all installed, the Windows subsystem for Linux, Ubuntu app, and you'll install Git. So I'm assuming you already have Git installed here. And so, and you can always test, let's see if this is gonna work, Git V, unknown option. Well, it's an unknown option, but it's still telling us that, <laughs> that, it's, that Git is on here because it's giving us all the, ins the possible instructions. So uh, there is a way to find out if you have Git <laughs> in, a, in a rather <laughs> obtuse manner. What we have to first find out is which, which branch are we on and which folder, which repo. This is BD community. We don't want to be there. We want to be here in break diving new if you see up on here where my mouse is. So I'm just going to do the basic commands CD. Let me just go back and show this. LS will show, it'll shows the file names. Uh, if you notice, some of these are white and some of them are blue with a green background. If it's blue with a green background, it means it's a folder. And if it's just white, then that means it's a file. So you can also do PWD, which is print working directory. And that shows that I'm in, I mounted the C drive, I'm in the coding folder, and then in the BD community folder which is great if I wanted to do coding work on the actual community site, not so great if we wanted to do something on the, on the static site. So I can do CD, now dot dot means go back up one directory. And then if you do slash, that's saying I wanna go into this directory and then break diving new. How do I know that that's where I wanna go? Let me just show you this. If I just do CD dot dot, and we'll go back to coding. Now, if I do LS, you'll see that break diving new is right here. So there is a folder there. So if I wanted to go into that, I can go CD break diving new because I'm already in the upper level coding directory. So then coding CD break diving new, great, right there. And I was working on this with Susan the other day about how to add her to the staff page. And I'm gonna delete that shortly, I'll show you how. So let me just go back then to show you what I just did. So I'm gonna go back up again. In fact, I don't even have to go up. I can do up one level, the slash, switch to directory and BD community. Boom, it goes, now I'm in BD community. These are both in the same coding folder. So now if I wanna switch again, CD slash, then break diving new. The other cool thing about this, if you don't know, if you press the up arrow, it shows you a big history of all of your recent commands. And so that'll sometimes come in handy if you don't remember something or if you don't wanna uh, type something long, which goes back to why did I tell you initially to create a coding folder in the C directory rather than somewhere in 15 different folders. If you, the way that this is, I can go CD back, CD back, C colon right here. This is when I start the Ubuntu, it goes right here. Because it's right in that very close directory to the top, I can just do CD mount slash C slash coding slash break diving new. And years ago, I put it in, I put it in C colon, desktop, files, personal, Monroe, coding. I mean, trying to remember that was a nightmare. Now I don't need to remember it. It's always just mount C coding break diving new. Great, so the first git command that you should learn is git branch. You do that and it shows you all the different branches that you have currently on your local. This does not mean branches that are up on GitHub, it means branches that are local right on your computer. And if you noticed here, it says add slash Susan to staff page. This is the name of our commit. This is the name of all, excuse me, all of the branches that we have. By default, it does not show you what branch you are on. That's something you need to add manually. And if you just search on Google, you will find a lot of resources. We'll probably act, we will have actually a, this resource up on uh, our breakdiving.io resources page. So go up there and click on resources or handbooks. We might be changing the name to handbooks and click on Git, GitHub and you will find a blog post that will show you how to modify your git setup so that it always shows what branch you're on. Otherwise, you have to do git branch every time to see what branch you're on. It's very inefficient. So yes, you can just do git branch each time, but it's a pain in the butt. And we can see we're on the add Susan the staff page. Once you add this part right here, 
where it shows you the only time you'll do git branch is generally to find out how many branches do I have and which ones do I want to delete. When you're working on a team, you're going to eventually have lots and lots of branches. This website doesn't have too many because we're not working on it all that often. It's a static site and doesn't up, update, get updated often. But the breakdiving.io page, which is a community site with many members across the world, it, we're doing pull requests every single day. And so every day when you do git you get pull or from origin, you're going to get all these branches that other people have been working on. I'll show you that uh, momentarily. So anyway, first thing I want to show you how to delete branches because once they're there, if they start piling up, you're going to have a, you'll do get branch and it'll be a list of 500 of them. So I don't want this add Susan to staff page branch anymore because I don't need it. Either it's been merged or I've discarded the code or it just doesn't work. So you can do get branch dash D. You can do lowercase too, but I always do uppercase. Uppercase is more dangerous because it will delete something that has not been merged. Whereas lowercase is kind of being a security guard saying, hey, are you sure you want to do this? It hasn't been merged yet. Uh, let me just do a test and just see what happens with the lowercase so you can see. To staff page. Error, cannot delete branch. At, at Susan checked out at blah, 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 blah. Okay, usually that's because, again, it's not merged yet. It's being worked on or whatever. I always do git branch D, um, add Susan to staff page. Let's see if this works. And it's still saying cannot delete it. Oh, silly. Good learning tip for you guys there now. And uh, for those of you who realized what I was doing while you were watching, good kudos for you. You're, beginning, you're a good coder. You can't delete it when you're on the branch. So you're going to learn another tip first. So check out. Apparently, git switch also works, but I've always used git checkout. If you want to use git switch, do research on it first because I'm not 100% sure. But for me, git checkout means, hey, go check out this branch. So go check out git checkout master. You notice we've got a, a master branch here. Great. Now we're switched to master. Now I'm going to press up arrow. Like I said, let's do the one with the lowercase d and see what happens. Ah, here we go. Error. It's not fully merged. If you're sure you want to delete it, run git branch with an uppercase d. So that's exactly what we want to do. And so let's just change it to an uppercase d. Now it's deleted and I do git branch again and it's gone. And another branch I want to get rid of master because we don't use master, excuse me, not master, development because we don't use development on our team on static sites. We only use development on the dynamic sites where have, which have databases. Basically what this means is we always operate on development on the BD community repo. We create branches off of development. We push our changes up to development. Then we all test it on development. If it's approved, then it gets merged to master and then master gets pushed up to the production database, production code base on currently on Heroku, and we may be switching soon to AWS LightSail. We will see. However, when you're doing with, dealing with static sites, you don't have to worry so much about somebody coding an error that crashes the whole site, and now millions of people around the world can't access it. So we don't use master on, he, uh, excuse me, development. We just use master. So we're going to get rid of git uh, branch, capital D again, development. And I just want to make sure we're on break diving new. We are, which is fine. So that's gone. So now get, get branch. We just have three branches left. Now, I don't know if there are any branches from other team members up on the repository here on GitHub. And if you don't know already, GitHub is used to have a collective in the cloud version of the latest code. So before, I, I don't even know how they did it. 20 years ago, I don't know what you had to do. You had to copy it, then no one else could work on it while you did it. Then you emailed it in, go to FTP, file transfer protocol, and someone else got it, then they could work. Like, oh my gosh. Now with Git, it keeps track of everybody's changes. It, it avoids merge conflicts, usually, and helps ensure that nobody is adding conflicting code or people simultaneously deleting different things that are going to cause problems. 
So GitHub allows you to keep track of all the code. And if you look right here, I, these are all the folders on here. Here are all the different files, the main files, HTML files. And the latest code is right here, merged to, you guessed it, master branch. And we'll go into that a little bit more later. So what we want to do is, well, we're going to do git pull origin master. So whatever the main branch on GitHub that has the master code is that you're working from, that's where you want to always pull from. On Break Diving New, this repository, which is a static site, we operate off of master. So I want to make sure that I'm in master here on, uh, in Git. And then I want to pull from master too. It's going to pull to origin, that's right here on my local, from master, which is on the repository here. So this git pull origin master is going to uh, make that happen. By the way, I just want to jump back because I skipped and didn't share exactly how to uh, do the clone. Remember we were looking at those right here, git clone. All you do is you copy that code right there from the SSH. Sorry for not doing this earlier. And then you do git clone. And if you go up to here, by the way, and click on defaults, and you check all of these, you'll be able to use right click to paste. It's very easy. And then you just press enter. And if everything's all set up and you have authority on your team site, you'll be able to clone that repository very easily. So now th the key is you don't want to do it in this folder. You always want to do it in the folder in which you want the folder to be created. So for example, prior to doing this, Prior to creating break diving new, we didn't have it. Where were we? I said we created the coding. So you would do it here, git clone like that. And then it'll automatically create this break diving new directory in your coding folder. I made this mistake many times and I finally avoid it. Don't create a directory break diving new and then clone. Cause then it's going to be a folder within a folder. Break diving new will then create a the clone action creates another folder, break diving new. So anyway, getting, getting back, let's do, we can just do CD slash, or we don't have to do dot dot. If you want to go down, you don't need the dot dot. So CD break diving new. And we're in master. I said we wanted to do git pull origin master to pull everything down from GitHub. Great. So everything's up to date and there are no branches that anybody's been working on. If there were other coders on the team who would push something up, they, those branches would have shown up right here. So if someone ever asks you, hey, can you please test my, P pull, my PR, my pull request? What you first do is go and do git pull origin master. Then to find out if there are branches, do git fetch. And let's see, ah, look at that. So there are two uh, right here, two branches, two branches that are set up. And uh, our, one of our members, Brighton, is going on a six month sabbatical. And uh, so he's temporarily removing himself from the staff list, which is good. I'm glad because we have a new branch on here. And uh, so you won't see his name on there, but it'll probably be back uh, in about six months. So anyway, if we wanted to test this branch, all we would do is git checkout and then the name of the branch. So you can just copy it pretty easily. Uh, and we're going to test that right here. Get checkout remove right in from staff and then enter. Okay, branch, set up track, remote branch off of origin. So we're on a new branch, remove right in from staff. When we did git fetch, it pulled all the branches from GitHub down to my local. That's where we're able to do a git checkout with the name of the branch and it switched to it. And you can see how helpful having the branch name right there is because otherwise you would probably have to do a git branch but look at that it does show that there is a new branch there now so very briefly i'm just going to do a test so let me open up let's find break diving new here let's close all files great and so i'm in that folder now in my text editor break diving new 
And I always recommend whenever you're testing somebody's branch, close everything. You're on a brand new branch. Don't confuse by having files open that you were using for a different branch. It's just going to confuse you. So and let me also get rid of this search that I was doing here earlier. Okay. So now this is here on our system, on mine, for whatever reason, I have to run NPX live server in order for the JavaScript to show up. So if for whatever reason you're testing a static site and you don't see the nav bar or something's going fishy with some of the JavaScript, look into this NPX space live dash server. So I'm just going to run that. And sometimes that takes a moment to launch. We'll see what, uh, how long that's going to take this time. And while that is going, uh, just to explain what MPX Live Server is, you, you may not have it installed initially. And if not, just type NPX space Live Server and it will tell you if it's installed or not. And if not, it will install it. And so now it's waiting here. And so now we want to go to a page here. We may have to refresh the server, but let's go back to meet staff. Okay, and let's just check. Sometimes this doesn't work. We'll see. Open in browser. Um, see, it is working here, but the nav bar is not there. So what I'm going to do is stop this, and we're going to. I'm going to stop the. By the way, and to do Control C is to stop it. Control C, and then I'm going to run that again, and it should actually just launch now that this one file is open it should launch the browser automatically. You go to that page and now there should be a nav bar in the top. And so we shall wait and see. And by the way, if you're wondering what we're doing again, we're testing a teammate's branch. So somebody made a change, we are now testing it. And so we did a git pull origin master, then a git fetch. Then we switched to that branch, launched uh, NPX live server and hmm. Driving me batty. Let's try one more time. If this doesn't work, then uh, I'll just show. I don't really. We don't really need the browser, uh, the, the nav bar for this. Well, I don't know why my NPX live server is not working. Let me just check something. Um, Slash. I don't know why it's not working. It's not important for right now. Uh, the part that we're testing is not the nav bar. So all I'm doing is just checking down. I'm scrolling down just to see if, yeah. So our friend Brighton is not here right at the moment. And that is good. And he was before he was on the probationary staff. And so, great, so this works. So then what can we do? Now that we know that this works, and uh, I will note in my review that I wasn't able to test the nav bar because I wasn't able to get the NPX live server running for whatever reason, kind of, kind of frustrating, kind of frustrating. So we'll go back to GitHub. We'll click on here, pull requests, okay? Um, now the thing is that you're gonna see something that's up that it's not there. So there is no pull request here. And so the question is, is he done with it or not? Usually the person who makes the pull request, this was Brighton would do that. If I go to new pull request and you can see right five hours ago, remove Brighton from staff was there. And I'm not going to touch that right now because I don't know if he's still working on it or, or whatnot, but what you would want to do if you could, we would just click on it and this would co remove compare. It's comparing that his branch, which is a version of master and saying, what's the difference between this branch that we just looked at and master. What I want to check and you can click on files change because remember we weren't able to look at the nav bar which is actually important, actually works out to our advantage because what I can do is looking in the changed file, do I see any, look at that, 
that's it. It's just one file, one changed file, and it's meet staff, nothing with the nav bar. So even though I wasn't able to test that, it doesn't matter because it's not going to affect it in any way, more or less. We would do a more thorough check to make sure, but we look just like it's divs. It's just HTML, and there were some comments added. So if I wanted to create the pull request, he did, he would click this, and then he would fill out the, the form, and then he would assign, make assignees. So anyway, that's basically how you test a PR. And we go back here, I would go back to this, and once it's done, I'll do git checkout, and we'll go back to master, because that's the one that we were on, and we go on git branch, you can see that it's still there, remove Brighton from staff. I don't need it anymore, I just tested it. Git branch, capital D, like I said, usually that's what I use, Brighton from staff, git branch to see what's there, and there, good, it's just back to those two that we had before, plus master. So that's basically how you test somebody else's pull request. Next step is how do you do your own? So we're on break diving new, we're on master. Anytime before you start to create a new branch, a new branch means I wanna create my own feature, I wanna fix a bug, I wanna do something to the website. If you're doing it all by yourself, you just do it off of master and you don't care. You can't do that when you're working on a team because master is the code that's live and that works. There's no telling whether the code that you do works or is suitable or whether the team members are gonna agree. So you should not be modifying things on master. A nice thing that you can do if you're a team leader in settings, <clears throat> you can click on branches and you can set a whole bunch of settings. So here, I have branch protection rules in place and this applies to master. Let me show you. So I'm gonna edit that. And here, we require at least one review before merging. The code owner, okay, so I don't know if that's me as the admin owner or if it's the owner of who created that code. It doesn't matter. The point is that basically checking this means everybody has to have one review. So even me, if I'm the head of the company, it doesn't matter. Someone needs to review my code before it gets, uh, it, it becomes eligible for merge. And here, if someone finds a problem during the test and then pushes a new commit, pushes some more code, it's automatically gonna dismiss any of the reviews that were already made by other people. So let's say Susan said, yes, this looks good, but then Leo goes in and goes, wait, there's a missing div. And then he fixes that missing div. Then it's not, uh, Susan's review is gone. Her approval is gone. And now we need to get one more. On, on, dyna on static sites, we use just one. On our dynamic sites with the databases and users, we have two because there's a bigger likelihood of error. And so we want two people to test. And if it's something that's really potentially dangerous, we have three or four people fully tested on their local site to make sure, okay, it's very unlikely this is gonna cause a problem. Even then, sometimes it still does. But the more people you have testing, the less likely that you're gonna crash the site. So now what we want to do is go back and let's say, let's say we did find there was a, uh, uh, a problem on something that's already on the site. So let, let's go to the actual live site, <clears throat> breakdiving.org. So here's our corporate site. And by the way, we would love you to click on breakdiving.io and join our worldwide community. It's free and awesome and really, really inspiring with some incredible people who wanna help you achieve your goals and dreams in life. Here's the website and you see live this nav bar works. Hooray. And so uh, <laughs> I still haven't figured out why sometimes my nav bar thing doesn't work with NPX server. Uh, half the team has the problem, half the team doesn't. Every team has some bug or something that's gonna drive you a batty. This is one of ours. So here it is, let's just find out, let's go to the the meet staff page and let's say we wanted to change this this here meet the staff 
to meet the team. And so that, that's what I've been assigned. I'm on the team and I was told, hey, please fix this. This is your coding task. So what I'm gonna do is first, make sure I'm in the right repository, make sure that I'm on the master branch or whatever branch you guys use as the, that has the main code base. How do you know which one that is? If you click on code here, it's the one that's automatically right here master and you notice we've got a whole bunch of different branches here are, here are some branches that other people have been working on there's the one that we were looking on before uh fix center images bug slack link blah 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 and anyway this is the branch you want to be on when you start working on a new pull request it's not the branch you're going to do the coding on but it's where you need to start so make sure you're there master and then up here, master, matches. When you're working on a dynamic site, in our case, uh, one of our sites is BD Community, you would make sure this says BD Community and this says development. And actually, let me just switch repos and I will show you so that you know. I, this is a quick tip up here. You don't have to go through all the clicking. Just if you know where you need to go, just type it right up here in the uh, URL bar. So BD community, and look, development is the one that's right here. So do we have a master branch? Let's find out. And you know, remember I told you this site has a lot more going on. Look at all this crazy, crazy stuff here. Uh, we also have 53 branches, 300 issues, 12 pending pull requests. It's a lot. So we can just scroll down and we can look and see if there's master, there is. You can also search master. So we have a master branch here, but nobody codes on that because master is is uh, very holy you know, because it's so perfect and we don't want to touch it. Whereas anybody can screw up development and it's not, it's a, it's a disaster because you have to fix development, but it's not going to screw anything up on the main site. And we like just having that second layer of security. So let's go back. We're not, we're going to, again, we're going to go back to break diving new. And that went to pulls instead. Uh, but we'll go to, it doesn't matter. We'll go to the code. Somebody wants us to do that. Okay, so let's say, and we know what it was. We want to create a, change this header from meet the staff to meet the team. So in our team, we always name things appropriately, uh, our branches with a verb, a slash, and then separated by dashes, what's going on. So for here, we would do git checkout. Remember, checkout means switch branch but you can't switch to a branch that doesn't exist yet. So you do dash B. So that get checkout dash B means, Hey, create this new branch and switch to it. Well, what branch? Well, we just name it. So add or no, no we're not going to do add. We're going to do replace and say staff with, with team header. And we just put it very descriptive. Why don't I put header at the end? Because replace staff with team. What does that mean? Are you replacing the entire staff with an entire team? And don't confuse your team members with, with branch names that don't make any sense. So I put header at the end to let people know, oh, this is just a header. Okay, it's probably a simple thing. Don't worry about it. It's not going to cr be crazy changing the database or changing the entire structure, adding 12 pages. If you add 12 pages, you should maybe do add slash 12 pages to team section, whatever it may be. Just be descriptive. Your team is going to have its own methodology, but this is one that works really well. So we just look at that. And let's just say, by the way, that we misnamed it. Or after we work on the branch, we find out that it, the, the, the scope of the task grew. So this doesn't make any sense anymore. Uh, what we could do is git branch, I believe it's dash M. Let's just do replace staff with, let's just make it even more clear. We'll do staff header with word with team header. Yeah, go ahead check about something like whenever you type in get checkout dash b you will add a new branch no so all right let me 
let me well let me let me go let me just finish this right here and then I'll come back to your question. Okay. So git branch m replace staff header with team header. Maybe that's a little bit more. Let's see if it works. Great, it works. So dash m is a way to replace to rename a branch. So don't feel like, oh my gosh, it's changed so much and now it doesn't make any sense and they're gonna be confused or, or whatnot. You can always change it very easily. I actually like this better, replace staff header with team header because now it's showing, it's really just a very simple HTML thing. So once you get onto there, uh, your branch, uh, you are, you're all set. Uh, I want to go back to one thing before I address Leo's question. So before we did this, let's do another git branch, a git checkout master, and we're going to delete this branch. So we're going to do git branch D, and then we type it out, replace. We're going to use the knee name, staff header with team header. Let's do git branch, make sure it's not there. It's not there. So let's say you're given the assignment. What you should always do, and I, I told you to do it, and then I didn't do it because I'm busy teaching here, and I got sidetracked, but git pull origin master. You need to pull down. You wanna make sure it's up to date because maybe somebody has merged new changes to master already. And it a lot of times will say already up to date. Don't necessarily believe it. You should always do one. Let's do another. Just to be sure, I, I'm kind of doing overkill here, but I just want you to know before you create a new branch, go to your master branch, your main branch and do git pull origin master. Then what you're going to do is do your create your new branch. So before I create the new branch, I want to answer Leo's question was what is checkout. So checkout can do a number of things. So if we do git branch, you can see there are two other branches here that are already on my local. So this is the first thing that it can do, get checkout can do, is just switch, just switch there. So add coding test page. In that case, you just check out and then the name. Okay, and why is that saying, is, that, is there a, oh, it's, and that's the while because it's called fix and rather than add. So get checkout fix coding test page. Good. Now we switch to it. The other thing, let's go back, get checkout master is we could create a new branch. So then, then it's get checkout dash B and then we would create the branch. In this case, it was update team header to the, or actually it's on update staff header to team header. Uh, Leo, does that answer your question? Yeah, I was asking about the dash B. Okay. So create a new branch. So yeah, dash creating a new branch. Dash M is to rename a branch. Okay, so now that we're on there, once we're here, for, remember, first step, you get an assignment from your boss. First step, verify what needs to be done. Don't assume, always ask, hey, is this exactly what needs to be done? Two. Go to your master branch. When I say master, I mean the master branch for that repository. It might be called master, it might be called development, it might be called whatever. How do you find out? By clicking code up here and looking right there. Then you do git pull origin master to get the most recent code. Then you'll do a git checkout dash B, create the name of your branch. And for those of you on the break dive and coding team, make sure you follow this exact format. Use a verb, update, add, delete, share, improve. If it's a feature, you can put feature slash. If you're fixing a bug, you can do bug, uh, fix slash, blah, 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 bug. Uh, if it's something with CSS, you can do style slash. And uh, we probably could come up with something like simply just maybe just calling it text slash staff header to team. That might be something helpful. Uh, it's more helpful on a dynamic site because when here, of course, it's only going to be HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. It's a, not a, there's no database, so that's basically all we're going to, all the code we're going to have. But on a dynamic site, if you're using Python or you're using Node or C, whatever, I don't think C++, I don't know if they use Git and GitHub for that. Who knows? Maybe they do. 
but it becomes more important that you get more specific with everybody because there's so much more going on. Once you're on the branch, you're in brand new branch. Next, it's just do the coding. So then we're going to go over here. I'll just do a quick search. I'm on the meet staff page, break diving new. You have to do, you don't have to do anything to your text editor. As long as you're in the right folder and that file is open, any changes here made, I'm just going to do this watch and I'm going to press save. Now let me go back and type get status. Look at that modified meet underscore staff. Cool. Right? Yes. So, it's all set up. Anything here you're going to modify. What if I did this? If I like, I'm going to just grab this, delete this, get rid of this. We don't need that JavaScript. This looks terrible. All of that. And, and then I save it. Oh my gosh, I've saved it. And thank you, by the way, to, to Sublime Text for <laughs> sponsoring Break Diving's not-for-profit mission. When we can, we will all upgrade. If we do get status again, it's still modified meet staff. And look at that, it's saved. Oh my gosh, we've ruined this whole page. And if we do get diff, G-I-T space D-I-F-F, that's gonna show us what was changed. And we can just keep pressing enter. Look, I red means deleted. And you can see a lot of stuff was deleted and blah, 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 blah. And I think, so anyway, that's the end of that. And if you can't get out of that, again, just do control C or control Z. Sometimes it's control C, sometimes it's control Z, sometimes it's Q, sometimes it, you have to type quit. Uh, sometimes you type I hate command line and uh, it listens to you. Sometimes you actually have to close all of your Ubuntu windows to get things working. If you're working in the Rails console, for some reason, I don't know why, it sometimes messes up with the pry gem. And if things just are not working, just get out. The nice thing about this is that Git will remember all of the things that you were doing. Even if you closed all of this, it's still saved on your local. Uh, let me just show you that. I'm gonna close this. And I have another one open here. We'll close it. So all of it's closed. Let's open it again. Open Ubuntu. And I'm going to go up. Remember I told you you can go up? Let's see if we can go up. There it is, right there. Very easy. One of my recent commands goes right into the directory. Look, it remembered exactly what, I, what, what folder I was in, what branch I'm on, and let's do git status, modified meet staff. It's still there. So don't worry if your computer crashes. All that matters is it's saved up here in the text editor. Now, the issue is, oh my gosh, this is not what I want to do. This is horrible. I've screwed everything up. And if you remember, like I deleted all, let's even delete more stuff uh, up here. Let's delete this too. And we see it says Monroe man. That's the last thing at the top. And we do a git diff. And now you can see even the doc type and the HTML language was all deleted as well. So that's, that's the problem. Oh my gosh, I deleted something wrong. Here's a cool command, git. Let's, uh, let me spread this out so you can see it more. Git stash. Just git stash means uh, get rid of those changes I made and go back to the last commit. So if I do git stash, let's, let's see if this works. Ah, hooray. The page is exactly back to the way it was on master when I created that branch. So the point is, the most important thing is that you're not going to screw up anything for your team if you screw up majorly on your own computer. You can delete everything. You can delete every file. You can change the database variables. You can screw up everything. And you can just delete that repository and then git clone again, pull it all down. If it's a dynamic site, you may have to set things up again set up the Ruby on Rails environmental variables and uh, reconnect Heroku and blah, blah, blah. But point being is it's just an inconvenience. It's not a, oh my gosh, you're gonna get fired type of thing. Uh, you, might get, you, might, you might get frustrated and it's gonna, it might take you some time to get things back up. Uh, I made a very big mistake the other day and it's one I hope that you will benefit from right now from my mistake. 
I had been working on the break the community site. Uh, let me just show you the community site just so you know what what, what I'm talking about because you can you keep hearing it. it's breakdiving.io and waiting for breakdiving.io breakdiving worldwide community. So here it's it's this online amazing awesome community. Uh, it's a social media site where we first of all we certify people on their dives. That's what break diving is. So don't wait for opportunities, dive in and make your own breaks. And so I just got certified for scholar doctorate, Kelly, break diver, surgery overcomer, Sokong in Cambodia, scholar, lifelong learner, linguist English for Kowser in Pakistan. And we have our notifications here. We have a lot of events that are coming up and we have, of course, posts and things like that. We have multiple chat rooms, private messaging. Uh, why am I showing this to you? Because the, I don't know why I went off on that tangent. I forget what I, do you remember what I was talking about, Susan, that I went, right, right, when I was talking into that? I know, I just follow on what you're saying now. You brought this yeah. up and you wanted to show it to us. So yeah, you were I, going somewhere to, to that page. You were going to talk about that for some reason. And then you said, wait, I want to show it to you. That's, that's, sorry, I can't be more helpful. I, I, whatever it was, I think I was, oh, I was telling you about the mistake that I made with, with Git. Ah. So I had been working for about four months on a branch on the BD community repo, working for a long time with another team member. And I just kept saving it locally here. And I never pushed the branch up to GitHub. And you can push a branch up to GitHub without making a pull request. I mean, you can push it up there, but no one's gonna do anything with it. It's basically saving it in the cloud. So if you make a stupid mistake like I did, you don't lose everything. What I did is I ended up having a problem with my, my, with my Git and, this, and the stash and I could, things were not the way they should have been. And I tried everything to fix it and I couldn't. So I finally said, okay, I'll just delete the, BD community repository locally, and I'll reclone it. Big whoop de doo It's not a big whoop de doo Like I said, it's just an inconvenience until you realize that there was a branch locally that you did not push to the BD community repo. So this branch that we're working on here, it's only saved locally, and it's, and it's saved within that folder, Break Diving New. Uh, so if you delete it, if you delete your repo before you push all your branches, you could cause a problem. So before you decide to reclone it, always do git branch and see, is there anything here that I want? And push everything up to GitHub. I'll show you how to do that shortly after we finish our changes to the page. It'll save you. I'm grateful that it was only one PR, one branch, and it's something that she and I, Bobby and I could fix maybe in two or three weeks of working together. But how nice it would have been if we didn't have to do that. So anyway, we're on the branch and we've made our changes. So we want to actually know what change we want to make, which is we want to search for meet. There it is, meet the staff. We want to change it to meet the team. I told you as soon as you press save, so control S, boom, it's saved, it's there. If I do open in browser, Meet the team. There's the change right there. You can see it live. And yes, our nav bar is not there because I cannot get MPX live server to work. We will just deal with that. And great. Let's say that's exactly what you want. Great. You're not done yet. What you always want to do is click inspect. By the way, if you're wondering, I'm on the Brave browser. <laughs> the only reason I'm on it is because, well, supposedly the privacy is good. But just by browsing, I, I earned cryptocurrency. So this month I've earned 9.75 basic attention tokens from Brave, which is about three bucks. And uh, so every month it, it adds to my cryptocurrency wallet. And so I'm really excited in about 20 years, I will be able to buy a PlayStation 4, which is wonderful. Uh, anyway, so but all browsers are about the same. You can click inspect. Always do your tests if you're a web developer by clicking inspect. This opens up the console here. I'm not going to go into the console here, but the elements basically shows the HTML on the page. 
And if you click on these, you'll also see what classes are added to each of these columns. So if you see what the CSS is, and then you can go over on the right side, you'll actually see the <coughs> CSS right there. And uh, we've got some JavaScript errors here. And so we can always look and find out why are we having those. And so we'll look at that. There's an access, the XML HTTP request, which looks like it's a JSON type of thing. I don't know, there's something going on with the footer. I bet the footer's not showing up, right? Yep, and it's because of that NPX live server thing. So it's not to worry about. Same thing up here. So all four of these errors are because uh, the nav bar is not loading and not, neither is the footer. So that's okay, we're not testing that right now. So now we're testing, what happened when I clicked into this, it basically put it into responsive mode. And responsive mode allows you to just drag and drop. So now you can see, is it responsive? And so you wanna make sure that before you push a branch that you test it to make sure it also looks good on mobile. Granted, we just made that tiny change there. That's not gonna have any effect on mobile. Don't assume. Things happen and you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that I had two things checked. And when I was typing team here, it was tying, you know, replacing a div with team. And next thing you know, it doesn't work. So that's basically what I'm just doing here is just looking and making sure, does this still look good? Did the breakpoints get messed up? Do the photos look good? It does look good. When you're done, you can just click the close. If you want, you can do it by individual devices. So iPhone six, great. Looks good on an iPhone 6. Does it look good on an iPhone 5? Oh, it seems to work okay. Not many people have that anymore, but some people still do. When you're done, you click the X over here. Great, so we're done. We know that it works and we like meet the team. So now we go back to our Ubuntu and we do get status. And it's gonna tell us that meet staff is modified. Let's do a git diff again to just make sure that the only change we made is to meet the staff. It is, look at that. So the red shows that meet the staff has been changed, that's the red, and the whole line has been replaced with meet the team. And if you notice, there's a minus and a plus. Uh, I honestly don't know what a caret M means. It's something that I should look into. If, if you're on YouTube and you know the answer, please put a comment uh, so we can all learn. That'll be your contribution but we already tested it live. It's not deleting anything major. It looks good, great. So then now when we do that, and what I was telling Susan here is first, right here, nothing has been saved at all. It's just saved locally, but it's not saved in Git. So the, the command to save it on Git is Git add. And there's two different ways you can do it. You can do Git add with a period, which adds every single file that's changed. So here, every single file that's changed is just this one file. So it's not gonna be that big of a deal to use git add period because it's one file. However, when there are multiple files, sometimes there's a file there that you realize that you changed, but then eh, you know what, I don't wanna include that. And I didn't do a git stash or for some reason there's branch mixing and there's a, there's a modified file there that you did not intend to modify. So let's say it said modified meet underscore staff and deleted index.html. Okay, that's, we don't want index.html deleted. We just want this one. So we don't want to do git add period. We would do git add and just copy the name of it. You can actually just highlight it. You can do a right click and then a right click. So right click copies it and right click pastes it. Or you can just type it manually, add meet underscore staff .html. So in this case, I'm just gonna do git add period because it's easier and I know it's not gonna cause any problems. So I just saved it. Now it's saved to git. It's saved locally on git. And remember, git is version control. So all it's doing is helping to keep track of the versioning, the changes. But how do we know for sure? Let's do git status. If you notice here, modified meet staff is in red. What we want it to be is green. So great, modified meet staff is now green. Whoop, okay. <clears throat> okay. 
when it's green, you know it's saved successfully and you know they saved the right file. If you had this green and it said index.html, when you did not want to save it, well, that's a problem. Then you can do git rm. Let's try that, meet underscore staff.html. Uh, the following file has changes staged in the index. So, hmm. All right, well, I've never had to actually use this, so I don't even know. How, I thought that's how it worked. Thought it was gonna be clever and be a git wizard, but not today, ladies and gentlemen. So we'll have to find out why. Uh, use dash dash cache to keep the file or dash F to force removal. Oh, let's try that. Git rm dash F uh, meet underscore staff dot HTML. Now let's do git status. Deleted meet staff dot HTML. Now again, that's a problem because we didn't want to delete it. Now I see that git add is adding it to there. When you do this, I think it's actually deleting the file. Let's just see. Let's, let's, let's go back to here. And you see it's, it's, not, it's not saved, which I'm wondering. Let me see if I go to project refresh folders. Is it gone? Meet staff. No, we're in the wrong place here. And let's look and see if meet staff is still there. And it's not. Meet staff is not there anymore. So lesson learned, you don't want to do that. So let's just see. Um, the good news is it doesn't matter if it, is, it even is deleted because uh, you can bring it back. Let's just say if it's, let's just say if we can do git stash. I don't know if you can do that with a deleted file. Uh, let me see. And yeah, look, now meet staff is brack and there's an X, which means it's saved. And let's see if meet staff is going to show up there. Let's go to project refresh folders. And do we have meet staff there? Uh -huh. Why don't all, is that, that's, these are in full in images. We don't want to be here. Let's go here. Meet staff is back. So that git stash command is your friend even if you do something truly that you think is terrible. So now let's, we, now it's back. Let's do git status again. Working tree, nothing, we're nothing to commit. So let's go back and just see if we go to meet. Let's go to meet again, meet the probationary staff, meet the member, meet board, meet the, it's back. It's back to exactly the way it was. So git, again, git stash goes back to the old commit. Let's just do it again and put meet the team. So great, now we can go git status. Great, git diff. There you go, you check that, so good. Now we're gonna do git add period to add it. We're gonna do git status again. There it is, modified meet staff.html. And now it's saved, but what we wanna do is commit it. So saving means it's just saved there. In the, it's kind of saved. It's, the, the technical world, world is that it's staged. Um, you said, notice it says git reset head to unstage. Oh, in fact, that's probably what I should have done. I'm learning a little bit about git here. That would have, I think, re reversed the, you know what, we're gonna try it right now because I wanna see what happens. So git reset head and then meet staff.html. Okay, I don't know what happened. Unstage changes after reset. Let's see, let's say meet, let's go to that uh, project, refresh folders. Still says meet the team. I think you need to try uh, head hard or hard head or something like this. Well, I don't think, no, we don't have to do hard right here. Um, let me just do git status again and see. Okay, I, oh, oh, you know what it did? Yeah, it, it did what, it's, it's interesting, it, it put it back, all it did is unstage the commit, but it didn't mod change this back. All it did is say, hey, yeah, un we, we saved it, no, let's unsave it. Let's unstage it and put it back. And so the changes are still there that you made, but they're not saved. They're saved locally here on this file, but they're not saved on Git. 
So let's do that again. So git add period, git status, great, meet staff. Now we're gonna actually commit it. Commit means we're going to create a message <clears throat> and take all of these git ads, because you can do you can do git add as many times as you want. Uh, let me just show you what I'm talking about. So here we did this one here. We, we do git status and we have that there. Let's just open another file, events.html. Let's uh, just add something here, save it. And now git status. Great, now we have one the file that's staged that, and one file changed that's unstaged. Let's say we wanna add this one too. Oh, great, git add period. It's gonna add all of them again. Now git status, now they're both there. So if you're working on something where you want to keep all of the files together, but you wanna work on one at a time, and then only make one commit, and a commit, you'll see them on GitHub. Uh, let me just find a pull request updated the success blog. We'll see how many commits here. There's probably just one, but we'll see. Oh, there were four commits. So updated the success blog relation context wise guidance, updated the success blog, merge branch master into update. So each of those things, that's a commit. It says committed, 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 committed. That's, none of this is here is committed yet. Only now git commit. Uh, just say, we could just say uh, updated events and staff page. And you look, look, that's what these here are. Update success blog. This is not the best commit message. Wise guidance. Doc, I mean, what, what, hap what happened in the commit? This commit is good. Updated the success blog page related contents. This one's good. Update success blog. Merge branch master, branch master, branch master, merge branch master. Make your commit messages very clear. This has, we have no idea what, why, what, what did you do to wise guidance? Did you delete the page? Did you update it? Did you add JavaScript? Did you, I have no idea. We're here, we know this is about the success blog page contents. So anyway, this one, we just put updated event and staff page. Great. Uh, if, I always use double quotes so that you can use single quotes inside. If you don't, it's gonna cause a problem with the commit message. Use double quotes all the time in case, and then always use single in, in the middle. It'll just make it a lot easier and make sure it matches. It's just like code. If there's a mismatch on these quotations, the whole commit crashes and you gotta do a lot of things to fix it. Not a big deal, but just try to avoid it. I, I didn't get it. Where I can put the double quotes and where the single right, quotes? Let me, let me just show it here. Like if you want to do git commit m uh, fixed the dog issue on the cat page. Something like that. You yeah. notice it's, yeah, it's yeah. double quotes on the outside, single yeah. quotes on the inside. Yeah. Um, Thank you. If, you, if you did a like this, it's gonna just read it from here, what from here to the D, and excuse me, to the quotation mark, and the rest of this is gonna come up as an error because it doesn't know what the heck that is. So now we've committed it. So now let's just do get status again. It's probably gonna say that there's nothing there. Before we do that though, just look, read this, update staff header to team header updated events and staff page. So this is the branch that you're, uh, that you're created. This is the name of your commit message. Like here, you see these commit messages? So it's gonna show up on GitHub like that. It shows that two files were changed. There were three insertions and one deletion. If you do get status, it should say it's clean. Good, nothing to commit, working tree clean. That means there's nothing to commit, but there's still there. A there's still a commit there that you just made. My, my suggestion is once you make a commit, push it immediately. Don't forget about it and start doing other things because right now it's just here. And like I said, it's just saved locally. If you want to save it remotely on the cloud to avoid losing all your hard work, even if you're not done with it, at the end of every day, just push the updates. How do you do that? 
Get Push Origin. Look at Chioma, break down menu, make each handbook resources linked active when click. So she just did something. We just got a, a notification. We're going to find out what she did on this later. She did something. That's why I'm getting the notification and it's on break diving new. So we'll find out what happened. Maybe she reviewed it. Maybe she gave a comment. I don't know. <clears throat> so get push origin. So this means I want you to push. I want get, Hey, get, will you please push everything from my computer, which is origin to update staff header to team header on github now there's no branch on github called update slash staff header to team header right it's okay it's going to create it for you as long as you have access privileges if you were able to clone the repo and you're on the coding team and you have right privileges generally it's not going to be a problem so let's find out what's going to happen when i actually push it and let's just go here to pull request or let's go to code and right here, and we want to click on whoop, code and let's click on branches. We'll see if this updates in real time. So we're going to push this now. Enter. And it's working 100% compressed, this and that, blah, blah. And you know, all you want to look for, I always look for is 100% everywhere. Make sure it's 100%. You'll see here, it tells you instructions. You can create a pull request. <clears throat> go to this, this URL. I'll show you how, you don't have to go to this URL because it's just, if you just click on pull requests and then click on, you'll, you'll see it. But, uh, and you'll show that there is a new branch now on GitHub called update staff header to team header. You notice it's the same name as your local branch. Uh, it's not here yet, but let's just refresh it. Maybe it's not instantaneous Ajax. Hey, there it is. Updated four minutes ago by Monroe Man. Update staff header to team header. So the branch is there. So you can only, and if it's there, you're like, oh, good, it's saved. Even if I do something stupid and totally ruin it on my computer, I can go back to the working version that I had. So my new workflow is every day or two days when I'm working on something really important, I'm going to push the branch up here because I don't want to lose it again like I did last time. Monroe? What do you think? Yeah. Please, what happens if somebody modifies, you, know, you put that in there for safekeeping and somebody else uh, modifies a file that you modified? So the good question, they can, the only way they can modify this is if they do it. Do you remember before? Right now, if either of you, Leo, Susan, if you type git fetch on the master branch, it's going to pull this branch down to your local. Then you can make changes just like I did, make new commits, uh, and then push those commits up here. And somebody, yeah, it, yeah, I've often talked to uh, GitHub about this. Like, is there a way to restrict certain people from, it doesn't appear that there is. What I, the policy that we have, and I'm glad you asked is, don't touch someone else's PR unless you are one, uh, no, uh, unless you are a hundred or their branch rather, mm -hmm. unless you talk to that person first. Right. Don't assume that you know what they're doing. Don't assume that you know better than that person. And don't assume that your fix is what is intended because you may not know. And uh, we had an issue recently actually where somebody, I made a PR and somebody on their, on their, uh, text editor has something called beautifier or something and automatically beautified beautified all of the code and then push that change to my branch when we had specifically laid everything out in a specific way with particular indents so that we could find things easily and the beautifying made it compact and yes beautiful and took the javascript that was all moved like on certain lines and yeah. oh, it just minimized basically and it's like that is so not helpful because we can't read it now and we don't know where the loops end and this and that uh so th that that's a good the answer to that question is verify with someone else before you nine times out of ten somebody will say yeah that's a good idea thank you for your help one time out of ten no don't do that 
I ha I'm doing something else and I needed to be like this in order for it to work or whatever. Thank you. Sure. Uh, great question. And so now we're on here and let's say now you can just keep working on it. So you're still on your branch. You can keep on working on it and keep making new changes. Keep doing git add period or add the name of the file, then git commit dash M message here. Uh, just a suggestion, please make sure they're all properly sentence, ca sentence case or full case capitalization. It's just a pet peeve that if, if things aren't very organized. Uh, and as a coder, everybody should have no problem with that. The next thing is we're done. Let's say we're finally done. And we pushed up our latest commit like this and we're done. Yay, it works. Great. Click on pull requests. And if it's yours, look what comes up. Compare and pull request. And let me just check something. Okay. You'll click on compare and pull request. This, we had a problem with this before. It was only one time that it happened in a year and a half, but it caused major problems. Make sure you're merging into master. If you're on the, the static sites, make sure you're merging into, we don't have development here, but on the BD community, make sure you're merging into development. Do not merge into master on the BD community site. It will cause major problems. We are all looking to make sure to help one another, but everybody needs to look before you approve or merge or whatever, you check to make sure that it's going into development on BD community, master on break diving new. And then here, we have a template on the BD community one. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. Here, we always just do what I did, how to test and make them both bold. Whoop. And well, you can just write it out or you can use asterisks, which turn into bullet points when you do it. Uh, be very des descriptive of what you did specifically and give very specific step by step. One, two, three of how to test it to make sure that it works. Uh, then you're going to add the reviewers. You're going to pick who you want to review it. You're going to click labels. You're always going to do PR needs review, usually. Okay, PR needs review. And that's basically it for this. And then you just click create pull request. And when you do that, it's going to show up here as a pull request. The people that you assigned are going to get notified. Uh, and then you can, if you click here and then right click copy link address you can look in the bottom left of the screen it has the direct link to that pr you can put that in slack and ask the team members to hey can you please help review this just finished doing this this and this so we don't want any of this though let's just say okay you know what no we don't want this branch anymore we go back to code we click on branches and we don't want a new you can also actually create a new pull request from here by the way uh, in this case, we want to delete this because we don't want that. We don't want to mess up the page with those changes we made. Delete it just now. And if you delete it, guess what? You can easily restore it. Here are ones we deleted a long time ago. You can still restore them. So never, never feel that. Um, actually, that's the same exact one. <laughs> update staff header, update staff header. But for a while, you can restore it if, it's, if, it's a, if you made a mistake. So now if we go to pull requests, it's not gonna have that header anymore. Do you wanna create a pull request? When you do that, go back here and do just, you wanna to go to git checkout master, git branch, cause it's probably still there. Just to update staff header. Well, probably it is still there, of course. And again, git branch, capital D, update staff header to team header, git branch, we're back to normal, do a git pull origin master to get the latest code, and voila. Uh, the last two things I want to share uh, is, uh, first is, you're going to have a lot of branches here. Let's say this is the branch that you've been working on for th three months. <clears throat> 
of course, other people have going to be up are going to be updating the site while you're working on this branch. However, you don't you don't want to be working off your branch to conflict with uh, with what's been merged to master. Let's say you're working on this, and then in the meantime, this one here that somebody else did gets merged to master. Now your branch right here does not match master anymore. It's not, now there's, there's differences. This is where merge conflicts can happen because fixed coding test page was created off of the old version of master. Let me, uh, I, I, I just wanted to make this clear. Let me go back, uh, let me backtrack. Break diving new, or maybe, maybe I could, can I draw a picture? Let me see if I can do it with uh, annotate. Yeah, so here's master right here. And that's right, and this is your branch fixed coding test page. You made a copy of it, so it's like that. And it's a branch, we'll just call it B. These are exactly the same when you make the branch. And then the branch diverges a little bit from master because it's got new features. Does that make sense? Yeah. But while you're working on this, master is no longer here. Now master is here because this other branch, add social media landing page that someone else was working on, we'll call that B2, B2 was merged to master and master was what was used to create your branch. So not only does your branch have brand new code that was different from this master, but now it has new code because it's got B2 code in it as well. So now this master has code from both of these. This new master has the old master code plus the second branch code. Your branch only has the old master code. I don't know if that's really confusing or if I helped you in, in yeah, any way. That was, that was an amazing explain. Oh my gosh. That's, thank you, Leo. I'm, I'm glad you went. The fact that you went to me as a, as a new coder, I'm, I'm really happy to hear that because I mean, other people watching this will yeah. understand it as well. So then what you need to do is don't you want before, don't you want to constantly take this this new master and merge it to your branch so that it's always up to date so you can do that very easily how do you merge it this is visually what will happen it'll merge and so now b is equal to m except for your changes that are on that specific branch and so when is this going to happen? How do I stop annotating? Let's see. Uh, annotate, can I go back? Yeah, okay, <clears throat> there we go. So let's switch to the branch, uh, fix, uh, git, fix coding. Well, let's just create a new branch. Git, checkout, b, uh, test merging branch, branch, uh, test merging master to my branch. Great, we're on a new branch. So what you can do is git merge master. And so that should work if we find out it should merge master, whatever changes are in master to this. I don't think anything's gonna happen because we already pulled and everything's the same and this branch hasn't been, been working on for a long time, already up to date. Let's try one of the other ones though. Uh, there, git checkout master. And we're going to do git branch again. And let's grab, let's say, fix coding test page. So git uh, checkout fix coding test page. That's something I was working on maybe a few weeks ago. Up to date, let's just see git merge master. Aha, uh -huh. look at that. So this added a whole bunch of images. It updated, uh, I added a new page, this join our social media page. It added, I 
an updated to the sponsors page and an updated to our tax documents page. So now you know that yours is the same as master, your branch, is, and the fact that it, it didn't say merge conflict. When would there be a merge conflict? Let's say on coding test page, let's say you made a fix to the team page that we were talking about before, but we changed to from meet the staff to meet the team. Let's say somebody else's change that's already been merged to master was changing it from meet the staff to meet Monroe. Yeah. Well then how does Git know which one of these is the one that you want? Is it meet the staff, excuse me, meet the team, which you did, that we did, or meet Monroe that somebody else already merged to master. Git is smart, but it's not that smart. And I love, I love merge conflicts for one reason. It shows that computers are not as smart as people think they are. <laughs> computers are not going to take over the world because they can't even do a simple merge conflict by itself. Really, really. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing is more frustrating than a merge conflict. You're going to have to get used to them. Don't be scared of them at first. Maybe I'll do another video on merge conflicts at another time. Uh, if you get a merge conflict, uh, you know what? You guys want to do a merge conflict real quick? I wonder if we have time. And if I, I'm trying to think if I could fix a merge conflict. You know what? We'll save it for later because I don't know actually how to simulate a, a merge conflict off the top of my head. I'd have to actually plan it out. Generally, if you do git merge master on your branches often enough, you, know, you won't have very many of them. The other thing is, if you do git merge master, but you never updated master, you're just updating, you're merging the old master. So what you always want to do also before you do git merge master, because this is merging the master of your local branch. So git checkout master, what are you going to type? The origin. Yep, git pull or origin master. Make sure the most up-to-date version is there. Then let's just go up. We can do up arrow, fix coding test page. Then you can do git merge master already up to date. And you notice it's saying your branch is ahead. Use git push to publish your local commits. And it gives you hints saying that, okay, that there's there, that it's basically, that's basically saying what I said right here. We merge to mast merge this master right here to my branch. There it is. All, all those changes. There was no merge conflict because nobody was working on the same files. And then it's saying your, head, your branch is ahead um, of origin. So origin is the same version of this branch on GitHub. So look, so maybe this is saying that, this, that there were changes that are not that there. Those are these things right here. It's saying, hey, there are changes that are different from basically what's on GitHub. So what, what we could do, let me just do git status is there. Um, nothing to commit. All right, so it's already, there is a commit here and I can do git push origin uh, fix coding test page if I wanted to push it. I'm not going to do it because I don't know if that's what we want to do. And that's basically how you manage these merge conflict things. Uh, how, how to try to avoid them sometimes. They're going to happen. When it happens, just reach out to somebody and say, hey, I've got a merge conflict. I don't know how to do it. Uh, and we'll help you. The last thing for everybody on our team, and I suggest this for anybody watching this who's on a coding team, if you click on here, you notice it says approved, and it says PR ready to merge. It looks so enticing, approved, PR ready to merge, and then merge pull request. And no conflicts, change is approved, it's green everywhere, don't press the button. The only person that should pr who should press that button is the person who has the authority to determine that the code is ready to go into the code base. That may or may not be you. On our coding team, there's only one person right now, and that's me, who makes that decision because in the past, things have gotten merged that have messed up the site uh, many, many times by many, many people. And I'm remembering now to remind people, <laughs> don't do it. A lot of times the changes are approved, but the changes are wrong. Maybe, and it says ready to merge, but it's not. 
or I have more information than you, don't just avoid the headaches of merging something unless you have express authority to do so. And again, I recommend that to any team you work on. Ask questions before you do things. Hey, who, who has the authority to merge pull requests? How many reviews do we have? Do we do reviews? Uh, who has the authority to add or remove labels? Who should I add as, as reviewers? By the way, any of you who are on the team for reviewers, basically add everybody. Uh, if, if there's somebody that we shouldn't add, have you add, we'll let you know individually. That being said, Susan, Leo, questions for me that maybe I didn't go over that'll help you do this more easily. I think I'm doing pretty well, thank you. And how about you, Leo? I'm, I got everything and I'm doing pretty well, but I need to maybe do it myself, like over and over and over to get okay. used to it. It helps, not, trust me. Not, not maybe. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will do it. Over yeah. and over again. <laughs> it's and great. You're going to have to watch this video again. Yep. I took, you're going to take down, notes on it. I wrote down a lot of notes now. Now I yeah. have now my so, notebook is, a, is filled with a lot of notes. So actually it helps a lot. Awesome. So the basic concepts here are the same for the dynamic site, except which branch are you going to be working off of? Development. Development. So you will never, you should never see master. Ever. When you are doing coding for the dynamic site. It's just development. Master is reserved just for the, the DevOps people who are pushing stuff live. On the static sites, it's always master. Don't create a development branch and don't worry that you don't see it, you're not supposed to. Uh, practice a lot. Uh, when you're doing, uh, I know both of you are working now on adding yourself to the staff pages. Everything's exactly the same, except instead of changing the header, meet the staff, Yeah, uh, you're going to add yourself and your photo. Add your section, yeah. Okay. Uh, Leo, do you have any other questions? Actually, I guess I'm doing K right now. Okay. Manuel, uh, to, to excuse me, to add the, the pictures, is that pretty straightforward too? That's taken as a change and you add the new files in? Yeah, as long as anything you do, anything you add, it usually gets registered by Git. So if you add, if you just take a file and add it oh, into I the image, images folder, yeah, and you can get status, it's gonna show that there is a new file added. Of course. Uh, sometimes it's hidden, like it shows like binary. It says binary. Okay. And I think because the image file and Git, it's not tracked as an image or so don't worry, but you'll see that there were like two binary files if you added right. two folks. Thank you. Actually, that's okay. a good question. So the radius of the the radius of the photo uh, from the style, it's already there is a one wait, format or one let style. Me time, let me time out for that. I'm, I'm going to stop the recording uh, and we'll go over the specifics of the CSS and things like that and the photos. I just, do you guys have any more questions on Git or GitHub for now? No, ever Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So, for those of you watching on, on YouTube, uh, this has been brought to you by Break Diving Inc. We're a New York not for profit, uh, and we are a worldwide social media community. I want to share that my screen again to just show you our community, and I'm going to open up in an incognito. So, oh, I can go with Tor. I can surf the dark web. Right. <laughs> and cause chaos across the globe and www.breakdiving.io and I'm just going to the private tab so that I'm logged out when I go here so you can see the home page and see what it is this is our main project of breakdiving.io a 501c3 not-for-profit social media experience with one global mission increasing your success happiness and friendships and helping you live a more fulfilled life we have a bunch of free handbooks 
on so many subjects. We have handbooks for Git and GitHub, for Ruby, for Rails, for hiking, for hang gliding, for learning the piano, for the list goes on and on and we're constantly adding more and more. We would love you to apply to join us. We have an application process because that's how we keep the quality of the members high and avoid bullying and avoiding criticism and anger and, and political arguments. We discuss politics sometimes and we discuss differing religions and, and philosophies, but we all do it as friends and in a very cordial and respectful academic type environment. Uh, we, we all are scholars at break diving. We're not a bunch of, of idiots, uh, you know, yelling each other and brawling in the streets. Uh, we'd love you to join. You can read all about our testimonials here. We've got a whole bunch of them. We're always adding more from people all around the world who have joined us. And if you can see here are some of our statistics. I hope by the time you're watching this that it's so much more. We have 96 active members, 614 total from 85 countries pursuing 111 dives. And we have 55 people who are certified in dives as we talked about earlier. It's a very unique site and we urge you to come check it out. It's really, really awesome. And if you decide you wanna volunteer with us, you can click on volunteer opportunities up here and get all the information that you may need. So thank you so much for checking out this tutorial. If there are any other coding tutorials that you want uh, that I can share with you, let me know in the comments. We can do some more. We can show you about the merge conflicts, how to solve them. We can show you how to set up a Ruby on Rails development environment. We can show you how to clone repositories. So please let us know. Break diving is here to help you. And if there's a way that we can help you, please let us know. So. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. All right, I'm gonna stop the share. Whoop. And bye.